this trend dramatic fires with so many fatalities and home losses. So this is something like 18,000 structures in 2018 from a single fire in Paradise, the campfire. The scary part is it's not the only community that's primed for. The one thing I hope in the future is that firefighting agencies will uh, utilize this new technology that's been developed by the scientific community because we're building new tools, we have new observations, and we need to integrate that into fire management. Eventually it'll keep happening again if we don't do something to break that chain, to make it harder or impossible for the fire to spread in such a destructive manner. focused on understanding the fire itself. And so there's a lot of ways that we tackle this. One is actually in how fires spread. In the United States, it's very apparent that there actually are more very large destructive wildfires. One term that's been is mega fires, fires that are over 100,000 acres in size. And these fires have been driving up the trends. Uh, there, there's multiple reasons for that. One is the choices we've made in fire management in the United States. We've taken fires off the landscape, which means that now the fuel is built up and is gonna burn in the worst possible fire conditions when we can't control it. We've moved to where the fires always used to be in what we call the wildland urban interface. And finally, climate change. So in some areas, you see long-term droughts, you see changes in weather. California is a great example. The fire season used to be, you know, about six months. Now it's 365 days a year. Get cleaned up, and then uh, I'm gonna do what we have to do on the other One side. of the largest fires ever was in December. So this just, it, there's a new normal. So lots of wildfires in California start in the grass and then they'll burn into the uh, higher terrain and into the uh, oak and shrub. So how does an ignition become a mega fire? It's very complex. If you have an ignition and it starts burning, if it's really windy, it's going to start burning and spreading rapidly, so you're getting lots of acreage burn quickly. If the fire gets into a canyon, it starts accelerating up that canyon. And if it gets so big by the time the aircraft and the firefighting crews get there, then it has the potential to burn even more. Embers are very small particles that fly in wildland fires. Uh, we're simulating them here with small wooden dowels, but in reality, it could be pieces of bark, it can be pieces of structures, and they get lofted into the plume. Those are actually responsible for most of the losses in a wildland fire. So we know the wood shake roofs are very bad. They're very easy to ignite, and those wood shakes break off and loft into embers and fly miles and miles downstream. This is a Doppler LiDAR here. That's the white box, which has a, a laser scanner. So we'll be able to scan all the way over to that mountainside and our goal is to scan vertically through the plume as it starts building up. We're able to use that to peer into the smoke plume but we can see where the strong updrafts and downdrafts are and that's really critical to understand how the model is generating the heat, how it's putting it into the atmosphere and propagating the fire. And then we also have a weather balloon system and that's going to be tricky because filling the balloon with these kinds of winds is really hard. If we understand what the winds are doing aloft and where the smoke layers are, the LIDAR provides that and weather balloons provide that information. We can relay that information and they can use that to better forecast when it's going to clear out. And so those are critical information that we can provide that. Fire management agencies should be utilizing the current state of the science and technology. 
I think there's a lot of room for technology to improve the way that we fight wildland fires and the way that we prepare for wildland fires. We have little hope of stopping a big destructive wildfire once it's already become a big destructive wildfire. I think that's the big change. We need to make it so that it's something that we can actually fight, so that it's something that we can handle.